Good morning. Good to see you all by faith again here this morning. As uh, Brother Aaron mentioned last week, when he started saying, I, we see you, I thought that he was looking at me, but he said, then he said, by faith. <laughs> so it's good to see you in that way again here this morning. Um, I was fully expecting uh, several weeks ago, as I thought about sharing here, that uh, where I am, there you would be also. But uh, it's okay. Um, we are thankful for this uh, avenue of communication and technology here. So uh, we want to take a look this morning at uh, how Jesus closed the Sermon on the Mount. And in this sermon, uh, Jesus shows us practically how to live out the Father's will under the new covenant. And sometimes I get the feeling that even though David was uh, living under the new covenant, uh, I mean the old covenant era, that he in some ways uh, almost understood and lived out the new covenant principles in ways that many uh, Christians uh, aren't living today under the new covenant era. And uh, listen to what David said in Psalm 51 in his prayer of repentance. Uh, and this is New Covenant language that he uses here. Psalm 51, after Nathan the prophet had confronted him, he says, Behold, you desire truth in the inward parts. And this is in his prayer in chapter 51 and verse 6. You desire truth in the inward parts. And so he understood something there um, that uh, sounds very much like New Covenant language. Uh, Jeremiah, God speaking through the prophet Jeremiah, uh, in chapter 31 and verse 31, the Lord speaking here through the prophet Jeremiah, Behold, the days come, says the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, and although I, although I was an husband unto them. Verse 33, But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law in their inward parts. Notice, that's the same word that David used in his prayer of repentance. In their inward parts. And write it in their hearts, and will be their God, and they shall be my people. And this is relationship restored with, between the Father and his people. Relationship restored. <clears throat> now, verse 34, it says, And they shall no more every man teach his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least, even unto the greatest of them, says the Lord, and I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. Thank you, Lord. Ezekiel also uh, speaks here, the Lord speaking through the Ezekiel, the prophet here in chapter 36, verse 26 and 27. A new heart also will I give you and a new spirit will I put within you and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give you an heart of flesh and I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you shall keep my judgments and do them. Now, some people would say that uh, practically living out Jesus' teaching in the Sermon on the Mount is not really possible for us today, but it's for some, it's rather it's some future thing out there that uh, we'll be a part of and be able to live out. Um, I, I really believe that this Sermon on the Mount is God's will for his children to live out today under the new covenant. So, we want to take a, a look at the way Jesus wrapped up or closed this, this great sermon here that he preached called the Sermon on the Mount. And in chapter 7 of Matthew, uh, if you want to turn there, uh, chapter 7 of Matthew. Now, two times in this chapter, we see the word therefore. And so we're going to kind of work our way backwards through these uh, verses here. Um, we're going to start at the last therefore that we see, and that's verse 24. Um, but before we, we read that portion of Scripture um, where we see this very familiar story of, of two men who were both doing the work of building a house. Um, and, and both houses, 
for both houses, there's, there's, a, there's a day of testing that uh, will give us the assessment value of the house. Now, uh, let's read one verse prior to this story here. And that is verse 21, just several verses before this story. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. He that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Now, this brings up a very uh, important question that probably uh, a lot of us or most of us have probably asked ourselves multiple times, and that is, what is God's will for me? I know I've asked myself that a lot. And uh, now we won't do this uh, for sake of time, but if we were to have taken the time to read the entire Sermon on the Mount, uh, we might say that we just got done reading the Father's Will manual um, for his children under the New Covenant in, in, on how we are to relate to our Father in heaven and how we are to relate to our fellow man and how we are to relate to this world and all the things in it. Now, the Father's will done in my life in this verse is what says gives me entrance into this kingdom. The Father's will done in my life. In chapter 6 of this great sermon, Jesus uh, teaching us how to pray, and he says, After this manner, therefore, pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so now with that thought in mind here of God's will being the, the, the thing that is going, God's will done in our lives, uh, the en- that's going to give us the entrance uh, into this kingdom. Let's read this, this portion of scripture that we know of as the, the wise and foolish builders. Verse 24 through 27. Therefore, whosoever hears these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon the house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. Now I like the way Luke's uh, wording says, uh, says it here in this parallel uh, portion of Scripture that he writes. He says, this, this wise man is like a man who, who dug deep and laid his foundation upon a rock. And I think we get the same, the same idea there. We, in order to find rock, we need, to, we need to work for it. We need to dig for it. And so this wise man was willing to pay the price of, of digging deep to lay his foundation on that rock. This rock is what gave value to all his doing. Now, the foolish man was also doing the work of building a house. However, the absence of this rock foundation so totally canceled out his doing that in this story, Jesus doesn't consider it doing at all. And his doing just had no depth under it. There was no foundation. And so your guess is as good as mine as to why he might have just stayed on the surface. So now let's keep that in mind. Uh, let's keep in mind that, that as, as Jesus was wrapping up this Sermon on the Mount, this is the story that he's, he's saying as he's, as he's doing wrap-up to his entire sermon. And at the beginning of this little story, we saw that word, therefore. So now let's take a, 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 few, take a look at a few verses here uh, prior to this story. And the one verse we read already, um, verse 21 through 23, and Jesus gives us a picture of what total cancellation is like in that day. And that day is that day of the Lord when we will stand before him and be judged according to that which we have done or not done. 
Okay, so verse 21, let's read that verse again. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? Now, this list of things that the many are doing is not necessarily a list of evil works per se, but rather, as, as they mentioned here in the verse, they considered them wonderful works. But it's not registering as such. And we can see that in Jesus' response. Um, he just didn't even, he didn't even acknowledge it. In verse 23, in the most, the saddest verse the saddest words that we could possibly read. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I never knew you. I never had this deep, intimate, knowing relationship with you. It was never there. There was no depth in the relationship with Jesus behind what they were doing. And all they're doing was just on that sandy surface. Now, let's uh, jump up to, to verse 15 here. And, and uh, here we see uh, surface depth again. Verse 15. Now, while there may be a good face to it, at the core, the nature is still corrupt and evil. And we, uh, get, we get a picture here in this portion of Scripture uh, down through here from about verse 15 down to 23. We get a picture here that's, that's uh, exactly the opposite of the new covenant. We see in this picture, we see this, this push from the, from the, uh, from, for, for to do God's will from the outside in instead of from the inside out, as described there in uh, Jeremiah and in Ezekiel. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those day, days, says the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and will write it in their hearts and will be their God, and they shall be my people. See that relationship? Beautiful relationship restored. And so that was not here in this case. And Ezekiel, again, a new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you, and notice this word, cause you to walk in my statutes, and you shall keep my judgments and do them. God's Spirit within us causing us to do this. Now let's read this whole portion from verse 15 all the way down through uh, in succession. <clears throat> okay, verse 15. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Notice that inwardly they are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father in heaven. And then we see that list. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not done all these things? Prophesied in thy name, and in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. We didn't have that inward thing going on between you and I. We didn't know each other intimately. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. And so I, I see a, a, exactly a reversed picture here of what the new covenant is all about. God's will 
done from the inside out. So how can we, how can we uh, enter into this new covenant relationship? Does God just write his law in our hearts automatically? Um, is there something that we can do? Well, in the beginning of this sermon, Jesus gives us a heart posture that is needed to enter and to receive this kingdom. And with that heart posture, there's a, there's a promise of hunger being filled. Hunger will be filled with that kind of a heart posture. And then if we, if we back up here just a little further in, in chapter 7 here, as he brings this, 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 uh, this sermon, he begins to wrap up this sermon. And, and just after he's done taking all these beautiful things of, you know, how it, you have, you've heard that it has been said, but now I say unto you, and he goes in, inward. You have heard that it has been said, and now I say unto you, and he goes inward. And at the one point when he's talking about loving our enemies, loving our neighbors and even our enemies, he says, be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. Wow. Can you imagine what they were thinking through all this? We, we haven't been able to keep the law of, of Moses. This outward commandment that, you know, you do this and you'll live, you don't, and you'll die. We haven't, we've been breaking that. Remember what uh, Jeremiah said there, you know, God said through Jeremiah, there, you're, you're, you're breaking that law and you haven't been able to keep it, but I'm going to do this new thing. And in what's happening in their mind, they're thinking, who knows, I don't know what they might be thinking by now, but you know, there's, how, how is it going to be possible for us to find within ourselves what it takes to keep this? Wow. And he's just really, really restricting things here. And, uh, and he says, you know, you, you're going to have to enter in at this straight gate because wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leads to life and few there be that find it. And so what, you can only imagine what might be going through their minds and uh, how, you know, all these wonderful things that you're telling us, but how are you expecting us to actually do them? And it's almost like Jesus replies and says, uh, in verse 7 here of, of this uh, chapter 7, and I'm going to read it in the Holman Christian Standard Bible, which I just, I think that, that the way the asking is done in the present continuous state of asking, I think is a lot more accurate than what the King James, uh, we might pull out of that. Um, verse 7, keep asking and it will be given to you. Keep searching and you will find it. Keep knocking and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and the one who searches finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Wow, what a promise. What man among you, if his son asks him for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a snake? If you then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give good things to those who ask him? All these wonderful things that they just got done hearing, oh yes, they're available if we ask and keep on asking, not just once, not just yesterday, not just today, but tomorrow and the next day again. You know, give us this day our daily bread. We're gonna need bread to live every day. And if we eat of this bread and drink of this, this blood, uh, we can live and we have what it takes to live under the new covenant. Give us day by day what we need, Lord. So fear not, little flock. It's your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Now, we, we want to read verse 12 here. We, we didn't read verse 12 here uh, of chapter 7, and I just love this because... because you know, when it gets so complicated and we're wondering how are we ever going to do all this and, and make sure we're doing all the will of God, you know, it's like there's another therefore there kind of wrapping up that section there and, and of, of all these things that Jesus was saying. And, and he says, uh, therefore, whatever you want others to do for you, do also the same for them. This is the law and the prophets. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And we could teach our children this. This is the gospel in a, in a, in a beautiful way that the children can understand. And I just, I just like it. It's, it's love. <laughs> love. Just love others the way you would want them to love you. Now, 
Now remember, we don't have it within ourselves, and that's why we ask. That's why we, we need to be asking uh, every day. Give us this day our daily bread. So love, yes, love is the fulfillment of the law. Though I speak, the Apostle Paul says in, ver- in 1 Corinthians 13, verse 1 through 3, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. Talk about a total cancellation of all the good that I'm doing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Love. Love. The Apostle Paul also speaks of that. Love. And so fulfill the law of Christ. Bearing one another's burdens. Love. Yes, love. Is the fulfillment. Perfect love. Perfect love casts out all fear. It will cast out the fear of me not doing enough to be accepted by the Father. And I will find that love is a stronger motivator for doing the Father's will than fear ever was. Fear is a motivator from the outside in, while love is a motivator from the inside out. Inside out is what the covenant, new covenant is all about. And we know, the Apostle John says in his epistle, we know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. That's how we'll know. We love the brethren. 1 John 3, verse 14, that was. And as we keep ourselves in this love relationship that Jesus prayed for in John chapter 17, the world will look on and they will know that we are his disciples. And oh yes, there will be persecution. That's, that's another one of those things that comes along with it. Because there will be some of those that really would long to be at that place and they haven't been able to and there will be hatred in the context of where it says, talks about Cain hating his brother. Um, he says, marvel not if the world hates you. Cain was one that was trying very hard and he didn't feel that acceptance of the father in all his doing. So we will be hated. But as we keep ourselves in that love relationship, praying and keeping ourselves there with our father in that love relationship, we will have compassion and we will make a difference and we'll be able to pull some out of the fire and we'll be able to keep ourselves unspotted from the world and the flesh. And as he is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. It's out of this love relationship that he's able to do that. And so the question might come sometimes is, how much do I need to do before I know that I'm doing the Father's will. Keep ourselves in the love, and he'll, he'll cause us to do <laughs> what we need to do. It's really simple. I just love the simplicity of the gospel. Love. Love. In that position, the Lord will keep us, and all fear is gone. God bless you. Ever hear that sound? Oh, it says missed. Well, he'll try again probably. One of the things that we uh, 
talked about is that we miss the testimonies after a message. It's such a blessing to hear people uh, share a word of edification and wisdom to the body. So thank you, Brother Abner, for bringing that message. And uh, I'm expecting a, a brother or two to give me a call here this morning. And maybe I hung up on him. I don't know. I pulled it out of my pocket. So we'll see if they call me back. Here we go. Yes, brother. Hello. Hello. Good to hear you, Brother Dwight. I'm going to put the uh, phone up to the microphone here, and uh, the sound men might have to put it up a little higher so we can all hear you. So go ahead, Brother Dwight. Oh, wow. from God today. You know, there's something in me that uh, compels me to look for the simple. And I'm convinced more and more that the gospel of Jesus Christ is very simple, not complex. It's something we can get a hold of. We can make our own. We can prosper in the power of the Holy Spirit. And we heard that today. In the last month, when someone talks to me or I talk to myself, I often find myself giving the answer, love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind. And that was God's purpose for his people in the old and um, yeah, David David shows us what is possible in knowing God, the intimacy the um, depth of insight the um, strength of knowing God from the heart of love for we know God by loving him and yes David went Something of what we think of New Covenant and the Old Covenant, but that was always God's idea. So, practically, this becomes quite other for us many times because we have been conditioned and by our, the sinfulness in us are motivated out of something that's not love. It may be the expectation of other people. It may be pressure that someone's putting on us. It may be the, just the pressure of our conscience. But uh, God said that he loves a cheerful giver. One who gives and responds from the heart. And that is the heart he will create in us. And create in me a new heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. A heart that responds from the inside, a heart transformed by God. A God that is loves him simply and truly. That's all. Amen. Thank you, Brother Dwight. Hello? If you want to text Thomas and let him know that you can hear it, I, I hope the audio is coming through that you can actually hear it in your homes through the live stream. We're trying something new here today, trying to add some fellowship and some uh, edification. So I don't know what I'm doing that's hanging up on the people when they call. Hello? Yes, good morning. It's Timothy. Okay, go ahead, brother. All right, just thinking of a response to the message here this morning.
beginning, I think uh, what Dwight shared is also just very uh, profound in that God's call and will for us this morning is so simple and so clear, and I really appreciated that from the message as well. Um, I thought of that phrase from Psalms 51 where he says, Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts. I think that is so um, key to what God is wanting to do in each one of us in this specific time that we're living in. You know, sometimes our hearts can get stirred up with um, some of the confusion or frustration of the current circumstances, but... Really, that's a call um, for us to turn our hearts to God and allow Him to work His truth uh, deep within within us to um, be able to change us, first of all, uh, as we face uh, the time that we're in and uh, what God wants to do. <clears throat> I also really appreciated the... Um, the the aspect that Abner mentioned from some of the things regarding the Lord's Prayer here in uh, be, that being a key to unlocking the fulfillment of God being able to do these things in our hearts and lives that, you know, he's sharing throughout this sermon on the Sermon on the Mount there. Um, the other way I would have thought to say that is the Lord's Prayer is a is a battle cry to fulfill the will of God both in us and in others. And so I'm looking forward to continuing to seek the will of the Lord to be worked deep in my heart so that I might live effectively um, as salt and light and also in the illustration of the houses that I might be built firmly and solidly on that rock. May God bless you all. Amen. Thank you, brother. I thought also there, Brother Abner, out of Psalm 51, David said, Create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. So thank you all for sharing here today. I believe we'll bring that uh, to a conclusion, and we appreciate each of you uh, tuning in, and uh, God bless you this week with that love relationship uh, just growing and increasing during this time as we seek the face of our Heavenly Father and we walk in love toward Him and toward one another. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for our Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, we thank you for the Holy Spirit of God. And we thank you for that hope that we have through Jesus. Lord, bless each one this week abundantly. Keep each one in your love. Keep us in your care. And Father, deliver us from evil. And Father, give us abundant grace in our hearts that we may possess our souls in patience and continuation of faithful fellowship and obedience to our Lord Jesus Christ. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for loving us. In Jesus Christ's name, amen.